Well, good morning. Of the 
you father we thank you we thank you for sending your son for us so as we go into this next song I just want to say we're about to do communion when you guys walked in you were given this little cup now I want to read a passage out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 starting on verse 23 it says for I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself this is Paul talking on the night when he was betrayed the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way he took the cup of wine after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. As, I, as often as you drink it. Then it goes on to say in verse 26, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes again, because he's coming again. So as we go on to this next song, just those elements that you have, the bread, the juice, represents our Savior, his body that was beaten, his blood that poured out for you and me, and we're able to be here worshiping him because of what he did for us. So right now, Jesus, we just give you the glory. We just give you the praise. We thank you for what you went through on that cross for us. But we, but we also celebrate the victory because you rose from the grave. So we celebrate that right now. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did. In your name we pray, amen. So as we move on to this last song, please take it seriously in honor and remember what Jesus did and give him the glory. Amen. worship you, Lord. Let's sing this right here. Every tribe, tongue, 
and nation will worship all angels and elders will worship every tribe tongue and nation will worship you all angels and elders will worship you and sing we sing this amen blessing glory and wisdom amen thanksgiving honor and power to you forever we sing every tribe every tribe tongue and nation the worship all angels and elders the worship and sing
worship one more time. Worship you. We We just praise you, Father, this morning. We praise you, Lord, this morning. We thank you. Can we give him a hand clap of praise this morning, church? We give you the glory, and you alone the glory this morning. We praise you, Lord. No matter what's going on, no matter any of the circumstances, we give you the praise. We worship you. We acknowledge that you are God and we are not. Is he good? All the time. All the time. We praise you, Lord. Oh, hey, turn to your neighbor and say, he is good. <laughs> he is so good. Well, welcome, Blinda Church, this morning. My name is Pastor Jeremy, and I just want to say, hey, welcome. And if you're a guest, we're so glad that you are here today. And if you didn't know, we have a gift for you, so please, please, you can go right out in our foyer after service, and in our welcome desk, we have something we want to give to you and just say thank you for coming and let you know that you are welcome here. And if you have any kids with you in, in service today, I didn't say this first service, but please, we have cry rooms that we can, that you can take your kid in there and you can still enjoy service. So that way the person next to you can also hear the message as well. So we also want to release our Uprising 5 and 6. I see Phil and Jabari up there. Everyone say, hey, Phil. Hey, Jabari. So please, you're dismissed. And then also, I want to bring up my friend, Pastor Jack. He's going to do tithes and offerings. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Looking good. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Amen. Good morning, Blended Church. Praise God. And happy Father's Day. We got one. We finally got one. Amen. Praise God. Today I want to give a little illustration. As the ushers come forward, we are going to do the offering this morning. Our illustration shows, there we go. That is a iceberg, glacier. And also I want to use it as an illustration here at the Blended Church. When it talks about the tenth, the tenth is that little bitty part on top there. You can see there's a whole lot underneath. And that's how God works in our lives. He asks us for that tenth to give to him for his kingdom. And all that's left is what he's done for us. That's for us. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's go before him. Father, we come before you. We, Lord, we bless you and we love you, Lord. We just know, Lord, that that you are everything to us, Father. Dear Lord, you work behind the scenes, making things right. Lord, and even the things that we don't know, Lord, we know that you know. You know where we're going. Father, I just pray right now for the gift and the giver, a cheerful giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. And here's your TBC News. Good morning, family. Pastor Mark here with your TBC News on Sunday, June the 18th. Blended Church, there's an opportunity for you to be baptized on Sunday, July the 2nd at the end of both services. Baptism is an outward expression of faith once you have asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Now, the water doesn't save you, but Jesus does. Be sure to sign up today if you are ready to take that next step. Family, we have two more weeks to invite someone to experience Movies with a Message with you for the month of July. With God's Word being the connection, the movie will be broken down and shared in a way that is relatable to your daily life. Let's fill these seats and enjoy worship, a movie, a message, and snacks all at the same time. Also remember, Daryl Strawberry will be with us on Sunday, July 16th to share the gospel with us as well. Amen? Prayer, prayer, and more prayer. 
Join us each week, Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. for corporate prayer right here in the sanctuary. We cannot express enough how great God is. Come experience Him and recharge your faith through prayer. The doors are open. Hey, we had a great time celebrating our graduates and welcoming our new seventh graders last Sunday in Awakening Youth. And the pool party on Friday was a blast too. Enjoy time with family today as it's Father's Day. AY will be back next Sunday, June 25th at 5 p.m. Parents, Vacation Bible School starts next week, Monday, June 26th, and runs through Friday, June the 30th. VBS will be led by Nate Waterfield and our Awakening Youth Directors, Juan and Maddie Alvarado, and held at our Iglesia Triunfo campus. Do your 6th through 12th grader a solid and register them today. And if you're looking for an opportunity to serve and pour into our students, there's a volunteer spot waiting for you. Sign up to volunteer today as well. Well, we're going to pause to pay some bills, so enjoy this classic advertisement for our Blended Kids crew. Join Blended Kids crew today and your ice cream gets... It's true. We actually do have ice cream for those of you joining the crew, but don't do it just for the ice cream. Do it because you want to see the next generation grow to become godly leaders that influence those around them. In addition to classroom volunteers, we're even looking for a few folks that can help us set up and put away the bounce house next door. If interested, see this smiling face before you leave today. Check out a few more announcements found in your bulletin under Blended Church Happenings. Ladies, the Wild Women's Ministry Picnic is next Saturday, June 24th from 12 to 2 p.m. at Leonard Park. More information can be found on the insert within your bulletin. There is an Israel trip meeting scheduled for Monday, July 17th at 6.30 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Be sure to bring your $500 deposit with you as it is due that evening. Lastly, the Boys to Men Workshop for July is open for registration. Please refer to the handout in your bulletin. Check the foyer on your way out for any event signups. We'll see you next week for more of your TBC News. Well, good morning, TBC. How are we doing this morning? Praise God. Good to see you. I'm humbled and honored to be before you as always. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Uh, uh, you know, it is, it is a special, special day, but um, it always throws me back to our Heavenly Father um, and uh, how his eye is always on us. And I also want to acknowledge, I know we rejoice, and I know I'm going to have a great time with my family later today, hint, hint, um, but we, we, um, we do recognize, and I recognize, that everybody, when these holidays come around, aren't in the same position. So you may be, um, you know, kind of like I was. I, I don't have my father, my earthly father here uh, any longer with me, and that may be your situation. And, and you may not have the relationship with your father um, right now, but let me tell you, there is a father in place ready to receive you right where you are. I don't want you to feel neglected, and if there's hurts or there's things that bubble up for you on days like this, know that you can go to our heavenly father, and he's willing to incline his ear to make sure your heart is taken care of, okay? I just think it's important that we acknowledge all of that. It is a joyous day, and we're going to have a great time, um, but that's something that uh, I feel is important that we acknowledge everyone in the room. Um, that being said, I, I could stand up here and give another Father's Day message, and I'm sure many churches around uh, are doing just that. I wanted to flip that on its ear a little bit today. I wanted to take that uh, uh, an opportunity um, to remind us why we're here. See, my process is I start thinking about my Heavenly Father, and then I start thinking about the mission that's tasked to each and every one of us, right? As a child of God, why are we coming together? There was a reason why you got up this morning and you made your way into uh, this wonderful building and all of those things. And I pray it was uh, with expectation to grow closer in your relationship with Jesus. It's, it's great to see you again and it's great to have fun, but we have to understand there's a reason and a mission that we're here. And so today what I want to do is become a coach. 
I want to coach you a little bit today. I'm going to be pretty practical. We're going to get into God's Word, but I want to, uh, 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 I, I didn't bring my whistle today or, or my hat, but I, I want to coach you a little bit today. Um, uh, pastor said a while ago he thought I might make a pretty good coach to little kids, so um, maybe I need to start with them. We'll find out after service how well I do, uh, but I want to coach us a little bit and, and understand and get us to refocus that we are on a team. We are on the team of Jesus. And we should be excited about that. Because there's incredible opportunity that lies before us being on the team with Jesus. Amen? Being children of God. And let me also say this. I want to provide hope. Maybe you came in here today as a guest. You are more than welcome here. It's, it's great to have you here uh, at the Blended Church. Um, but our main focus is to provide an environment where you can get to know your heavenly father. You may not know him today, but at the end of the service, by the end of the service, I pray you get to understand that you have a spot on the team. Doesn't matter what's going on in your life, know that there is an opportunity for you to be on the team as well. And I pray you hear that today. So I'm going to jump in. Like I said, in light of all the athletic events that's going on, I can't help but Every time I turn on the, the TV, it just happens to go to ESPN. I, I tend to be a, a sports fan, not as much as some of our pastors, but uh, I, I tend to enjoy um, seeing what's going on. And recently, we've had a lot of championships. NBA just crowned a new champion in the Denver Nuggets. Any Denver Nuggets fans? Oh, there's one of you. Okay. Um, that's, if you like everybody else, nobody saw that coming. But praise God, and if there's not a better example of team then looking at the Denver Nuggets. They don't have a bunch of superstars, but they play well as a team. Amen? And also, you know, you have uh, NHL, the Las Vegas Knights. Uh, they won their first championship. So there's championships all around. Um, and and uh, it, it's interesting. It got me thinking, what about, the, what about our team? What kind of condition, what kind of uh, uh, a place do we find our team, the team of Jesus, the team of believers in who he is, what, what's our status? What's our condition? I want to talk to us a little bit about that because here's the thing. Throughout humanity, throughout the history of humanity, people have come together in multiple ways to do powerful things. Like I mentioned, uh, in the athletic realm, but also in the workplace and, and even in homes, there's, there's this team concept that we need to re-engage with and understand better. And, and, and it, gets, it starts by pooling our talents together and working for a common goal and um, understanding what the, the, the mission and the vision is. So again, I wanted to uh, uh, rally us today and, and bring us into one accord and unify and say, hey, we're on the team. Where's your spot, and what are you doing with your spot? Look, uh, and also send out a little praise. We understand, team, just recently, many of you uh, went out and were part of Serve the City. So you were part of Team TBC, and you went out and started serving outside of yourself, right? And see, that's when we as a team become successful. Our team success isn't with a trophy. Our team success has eternity labeled on it. Our team success is a, not an attaboy or a pat on the back from a pastor or a leader. Our team success comes from a smile on Jesus' face. And see, that's what you guys did. And I'm so proud of all of you uh, for getting up and going outside yourself. And even then, I encourage you, don't let this be just an event. Let this be a lifestyle change. Let, let, you know, let, let us get in the habit of doing well for others, which may not be any benefit to yourself. I know that's a lot, but... That's what we're doing here. We, we, have to be, we have to get refocused. So today, we're going to explore God's Word and, and get into the lessons learned from being part of a team and understanding that you matter. You matter. Some, sometimes I know uh, a lot of folks come through that door and you wonder if you have any significance. Let me just remind you, you are significant. You are the apple of God's eye. You have place. I just was, um, matter of fact, this uh, weekend, uh, two days ago, or yesterday, I got a call from somebody who was dealing with someone else who was in a suicidal situation. And, and I tried to help counsel and point him in the right direction. But the main thing that I know God has me put in that person's ear that's thinking of taking their life is that they matter. 
See, a lot of time they don't because of depression and, and, and whatever circumstance they may have found themselves in. They don't think there's a significance. The reason why I feel I can speak to this a little bit because some of you know this story. My brother took his own life. And that was powerful. And, 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 and to this day, I don't think about what happened there. He was a man of God. He loved the Lord and um, had a family and the whole nine. How was he so troubled in his mind that he didn't remember that he matters, right? I just, all of this kind of came to a head. I just married his daughter, my niece, not too long ago, and, and it all came flooding back. We have to remember what team we're on and what our purpose is because the truth is lives may be at stake. That's how important our game is, if you want to call it that, right? We're recruited by Jesus to be on the team to take his good news out to those who need it. Maybe one of you have come in today who needs that good news. Know that it's available. His gospel is true. His foundation is real. And he's ready to meet you right where you are. So let's get in, in, into that a little bit. I'm also excited a little bit because I'm going to uh, uh, introduce us and get us ready for what's coming in July. We are doing movies with a message. I'm excited about that. We have a great time. Um, you know, it really is a great time to invite someone. Um, not, that, uh, not that there's never a great time to bring somebody to church, but as I said, first service, sometimes we're having uh, what our pastor affectionately calls family talks. It gets a little serious in, in the house. We got we to gotta cover some things, and that's okay. That needs to happen as well, but this is a great time for that coworker or that neighbor or somebody, a family member that you've been, you've been really trying to egg on to bring them uh, into uh, the church here at TBC, it's a great time to do it. We have a great time. Movies with the message. I explained it last, uh, last week. Uh, we take a, a, a Hollywood movie and we use clips from that movie and preach the gospel. We absolutely will share uh, uh, the power of Jesus through each and everything we do. So it's a great time to invite. So I'm going to kick that off a little bit and I have a clip um, from one of my favorite series and maybe some of uh, you have also seen this. It's called The Chosen. Uh, I have a clip from that today that I'm going to use and pray that um, you're, you're blessed by it as I am. I want to start with uh, a scripture, 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. So if you have your Bibles, uh, please open that up. Um, for those of you that don't, we have it up on the screen. But you should be reading your word, get in the habit of carrying your word with you. Um, here, it starts from the very beginning that grabbed me. But you are a chosen generation, a chosen generation generation. Do you realize that you've been chosen by Jesus? I mean, I, I, I really want that to sink in sometimes. I, we read the scriptures and sometimes we gloss over things that, that said about it, said he knew you before you were even formed in the womb. Because some of us are sitting here wondering if, you're, if, you're, if you raise your hand, you could do a backflip, you're wondering if Jesus is even seeing you, if God even knows you, you're around. Of course he does. You need to be confident knowing that he knows you and that you're a chosen people, those of you who have come to in relationship with Jesus. You're chosen. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. See, that's, that's part of this rallying cry as coach. I'm going to remind us who we are. We're part of his kingdom. He is king, king of kings, lord of lords. It is, it's his priest, uh, priesthood that, that, that uh, 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 covers us all that we're part of, that we're grafted into here. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are all a few steps from there, and somebody in here today may feel like you're surrounded by nothing but darkness. Let me tell you that you're called out of that darkness. Jesus paid it all. He went to the cross. He said it's finished. He, his blood that, that, that we signify today through communion, Receiving his body and his blood and, and, and those symbols that represent that, it washes you clean as snow. No longer do you have to exist in darkness. That's not called your spot. He's called you into the team. There's a spot for on the team. And verse 10 says this, who once were not a people but are now the people of God. So we, we are grafted in as Gentiles. It was the Jewish folks first that he went after, and now we have the opportunity uh, as Gentiles, as those who weren't part of that lineage, to now be grafted in. We can all be part of the team. There's no more varsity and JV and, and all that. We can all be on varsity. That should, make, 
That should make some of y'all uh, JV players excited. You, we, 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 we get to be part of the varsity team automatically, right? right? The, 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 door, the door is open. You don't have to play JV anymore. That's, you know, Pastor Mark knows a lot about JV, but that's okay. Now he could be on the varsity team. This dude is going to kill me later on. I'm sure of it because, man, I, I don't know. It's just too easy. It flows right off the top. But y'all don't know what we have to deal with in the office, so that's my, that's my case. I'm sticking to it. But you are called. You have a place on the team. You were once walking in darkness, and God has called you. You are a special chosen people. I think that's a good way to start because when I talk about this team, you have a spot. So too far, I, I, I think we keep God at arm's length, and we see people doing uh, wonderful things in ministry, and you say, well, I can't do that. I can't do that. Maybe you can't do that, but that's not your position on the team. God still has a position for you on the team. I'll say this, and I want you to embrace it. There is something, there is a spot on the team with your name on it alone. It's not Pastor Damon. It's not Pastor Jeremy, Pastor Mark, Pastor Daner. That, that we have our assignments. But you need to know that there is a position on the team for you that has just your name on it. A jersey that has your name across the back. Have you received your jersey? Are you walking with the team? I want to talk about that today. Talk about what it means to be on the team. So the first thing I want to talk about is supporting one another. You have to support one another on the team. Being on the team is not merely about personal success. But I feel like oftentimes what happens, especially when we start talking about ministry, is a lot of folks say, well, as soon as I get my stuff together, then I'll be a part of the team. See, that's, that's, that's backwards here. You, you realize that God knows about your mess regardless of how you try to pretty it up, right? Here at the Blended Church, we say, come as you are. We, we want you on the team, but we can't put you on the right spot. We can't put you in the right spot if you come in wearing the mask. We all have hurts. We all, that's why I wear our, our, our famous shirt. There's no perfect people. We all fall short, Right? None of us are perfect, but if you want to come in and play, I'm the perfect person, this, that, and the other, and then you go home and and your life is just swirling with trouble, we we can't put you in the right spot on the team. Maybe you need to heal a little bit longer before you start getting into action. Maybe you need to start out right in this spot before we start, but that's some of the things that that we've experienced here. People come in, they, they get excited. Hey, pastor, I can do this. I can do this. I want to start this group. I want to start that group. They start off like a rocket, but boy, because they didn't take care of what they needed to and didn't show us where, who they really were, they ended up in the wrong spot and then they ended up falling. I don't want that to happen to you. So again, as coach, I'm just rallying us around and understanding you got to support one another. We want to support you. Powerful teams show the real benefit. We as believers still adhere to the false belief that you have to attain some personal level of success before you can move forward. That's, that's, uh, unfortunately, I think that's where we start to get tripped up. And that's how people start telling themselves, it's okay if I just come a couple of times to church on Sunday because, I, I, you know, this is how they know me. And as long as I can continue to perpetrate that image, then we'll be okay. We're missing you on the team. I preached out a a, a while ago talking about things that we're doing on the team, things that we're doing in church. If you're not here, how are you going to understand the new playbook? Because our our pastor may be receiving from the Lord saying, hey, now we're going in this direction. If you're not here, then you're getting the wrong place in it. And even though your position is here, now you're playing what they call out of position. Because you're operating on a different mindset of how things you thought were, now they've changed. So that's what I'm saying. We gotta, you got to come in, be here regularly to understand where we're going as the team. You matter. You have a spot on the team. So, again, the goal is supporting one another to represent God's kingdom to those on the outside that they may come in and understand. Acts 2, 44 and 45 is where I'd like to go now. Many of you uh, understand this and have read this because this is a picture of the early church. This is how they considered one another early on. Now all who believe were together. They were together and had all things in common. 
See, there wasn't this divisiveness. There wasn't the, the backbiting, the, I can't believe sister so-and-so over there, just, he could do that. And I can't believe brother so-and-so won't do this for me. And so, so see, it, it, it was far less than that. Now, they were human. And I'm not saying it, nobody was perfect, but I'm saying they were in one accord. They were moving together. They, understand, they understood the goal at the time. They were together is what the word says. And 40, verse 45 says this, and they sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. Now, pastor has said this multiple times. I'm not saying you go and sell your house and sell everything and, and come and just sit here. And that's, that's not, don't miss what, what the, the point of the message is there. The point of the message is you were so in tune to the team and the move of what was happening that you were all in. It didn't matter if there was a need that you could help meet, then you help meet that need, right? Because it was about moving together in the same focus, on the same playbook, because you wanted to attend the goal, uh, achieve the goal together. The finish line was, was the same. Everybody was moving together. If we could only get back there as a church, look at the things that we could do. Look at the things that we could accomplish if we had the singular vision. If we wasn't worried about who got promoted over here and who got this advantage and, oh, my goodness, I can't believe they highlighted that person up on the screen. I want to be on the screen. Uh, and, and I can't believe they put that person at the front door. I want to be at the front door. Something tells me they weren't so much worried about who was at the front door and who was on the screen. They were worried about, man, we love God together and we're going to get some things done and we're going to be the church as we were called to be. That's how I read that. That whatever they had need, that the need was met. And when there was an opportunity to volunteer, if Robin calls, man, maybe you answer the phone and say, yeah, I have some time. I can help you. I can do those things. Uh, and, and again, I'm not getting on anybody. I'm just saying I'm trying to refocus us. We're on the same team, so we got to be thinking together. So this is what we have to do. We have to share in the joys and the burdens and the challenges of each other. You got to make yourself available. And I know this world is, is uh, uh, hard uh, pressed, or you're hard pressed in this world to, uh, d- with your demands of your time. I know more and more people are trying to take, and, and, and that's, that's what I get, Pastor. I, tell, I just don't have the time. I don't have the time. I don't have the time. I know we have time, but we prioritize. And something tells me this needs to be a priority. Because here's the, here's the thing, the, the game that we're playing has eternal effects, right? It's not just about the here and now. Man, we're talking about eternity. And so I, I feel like it's important that we make time for what's important. And it is interesting how we find time to go do all these other little things. But boy, I tell you, when it comes to advancing God's kingdom and moving that forward, boy, it, it, man, I, I, I don't think I can make it. Again, please hear my heart. I'm not coming down on any of us. We all find ourselves doing that. you got to make decisions. My prayer is that you just remember you have a spot on the team that you need to be playing. we got to encourage each other, lift each other up to have the collective victory in Jesus. Let's go to Philippians. And, and as Paul was speaking to the church in Philippi, chapter 2, verse 3, it says this, Do nothing for selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, Count others more significant than yourself. I had a a good brother tell me uh, uh, between services that humility gets a bad rap. And I think he's right. We in our society says if if you're humble, if you're, oh, that's that's a less than position now. In God's kingdom, that's, that's a great position that you would consider someone greater than yourself. That you would get out of your own way and, and what you want and consider someone greater than yourself. See, even Paul was talking to us like, man, you guys have got so consumed of doing things just for yourself, that selfish ambition, that you've lost sight of the real goal. The real goal is to make sure that the team is taken care of and that you're lifting each other up and you're walking together in unison, in unity, getting, getting the goal. So when, when it says humility, count others more significant than yourselves, that's a lifestyle. Wherever you go, you should be seeing other people as, as children of God, and, 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 and he has a plan and a purpose for them as well. They have a spot on the team. They may not know it yet, but they really have a spot on the team. How are you considering them? Now, I know it, it's easy for me to stand up here and say that. 
And, and sometimes you're looking at other folks, and you're like, oh, I don't want them on my team. Like, but it don't matter how bad Pastor Mark plays, he still plays on the team. We still invite him out to come play on the team because he has significance, right? There's, there, but, but that's, to me, where the rubber really hits the road. It's easy to be around team members who you like. Let, let's just make it real here. You go to, you, there's co-workers that you go to work, and, and you have no problem locking arms with them and say, oh, yeah, no, we good. But what about that one that's two, two or three cubicles over that you like, ooh, I wish he would just say one more thing to me. Are you looking at them as, as a child of God as well? And, and maybe God is saying your true success in your life won't really take place until you get that person to be on the team. I know that's going to hit some of y'all hard because y'all, you're already envisioning that one person. It could be a family member. It could be somebody else. You're like, ooh, they got to be on the team too. Yep, they got to be on the team. And how about everything that you thought you were going to accomplish in your life and through your life probably wouldn't happen until you get them on the team. Wouldn't that change your perspective? It changes mine. It changes mine. I mean, there's, I'm not saying you're going to fall in love with everybody that you meet, but I'm just saying... We, we, we got to understand what our goal is here. This is what we're doing, right? We're going out trying to represent Jesus in our lives and through our lives so other people can see him, not us. And it may come down to that difficult person that you don't want to have anything to do with. Yep, that person right there. Jesus, tap you on the shoulder. Stop looking the other way. That's the team member I want you to get. Your assignment is to recruit that person. No, Jesus, please. I'll go get this one. I'll go get Nope. This one over here. But we all find ourselves there. Some difficult positions of, of it's like understanding that and really embracing that. See, that's the kind of love I feel like when God's word starts to talk about how will they know? How will the world know anything different than what's going on? They'll know it by those kind of actions. People know they might be the troublemaker at work, but then they see you seeing them as an additional team member and making a way for them. Then it starts to change actions. What would possess that person to go talk to so-and-so? It just might be you understand the goal, and the goal is to love. That's where we start here. That's where everything begins. We start on a platform of love and loving others. Love God and love others as ourselves, right? That's what, that's, that, that's, th those are some of the aspects of our team. That's what our team identity is. It's a place of love and operating in that love. Another thing that we have to embrace uh, here on our team is diversity. Man, I love talking about that here at, at the Blended Church because from the very beginnings of where you're sitting right now, that has been our mission, our motto, is to represent heaven and be what heaven's going to look like. We've said it a billion times. We're going to keep saying I'm never going to get tired of saying how beautiful it is to come in and interact with people that don't look like me. It's too easy to sit in that place of comfortability and just surround yourself with the same and, the, and that look the same, who think the same, who act the same. That's not what our team is about. Our team is about a variety of people that bring a variety of things to the table. That's what we get excited about here at the Blended Church. Our motto is we celebrate, in, uh, in, our, we celebrate our diversity while worshiping in unity. We never forget the main thing, and make sure the main thing is the main thing, and that's to love Jesus first and foremost. You may look different than me. Your background may be different than mine, but that's okay. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to always remember there's a seat at the table for my brother or my sister in Christ. And that's what we celebrate. That's what we get excited about here at the Blended Church. We, we understand that individually you have gifts and talents, but it's not until you bring those gifts and talents together with others. Look, we have our, uh, our manifesto in the back. There's still copies. You can, you can pick one up. It's just a list of different things that we believe here at the Blended Church. And in there, on one of the pages, you're going to find uh, Starbucks Frappuccino. Now, I know I'm going to start describing it. It's starting to get late in the afternoon. Y'all thinking it'd be real good to get one, but hang on. Let's keep your focus up here. <clears throat> but We've all had, hopefully you've enjoyed a, a Frappuccino in your life, maybe not, but this is what it is. They take some of the ice, and then they take some of the milk, and then they take some of that flavoring, and then they add on the whipped cream and the chocolate sauce, and you start mixing it up, and, and yeah, I know some of y'all nodding your heads right now, like, oh, yeah, Pastor, that's, that's fantastic, yes. 
It is. But here's the thing. It's the blend of it that we enjoy. It's the different elements and aspects that have come together to make the product. That's the same thing as our team here at the Blended Church. In our diversity, it's the different aspects and elements of who we are to come together as a team to represent Jesus outwardly. Does that make sense? Ice is just ice. Milk is just milk. But, boy, you start blending that stuff up together, and they put that sweet stuff in. Oh, yeah, now you think you got something now. And that's how we operate here. And that's what we should be doing. We should be utilizing what love looks like in, in, and re- recognizing that we were all created uniquely. We all have different things. So don't, don't try to pattern yourself after Damon. I'm just a man. I, I, I would fail you in myself. But because God in me represent that. If, you, if God has something for you, take hold of that. Don't, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a man. But I bring different gifts and talents to the table. Right? Uh, if, if you listen to my playlist, it's going to be very different than our pastor's playlist. But it, here's the thing. The difference is, uh, or the, the unifying factor is we both love Jesus and we're sold out to him. Right? So it doesn't matter if he listens to this and I listen to this and so on and so forth. That, that's the beauty of it is we come together representing who God is in our life. So we need you on the team. Because some of you are thinking, I, I, y'all don't want me. You don't want me. You don't, you, you don't know what I've done in my life. And you're right. I may not know all of what you've done in your life, but I know Jesus knows what you've done in your life. And he still says, come on. He still says, come on. You, you, you can't get too far away from him where he wouldn't still say, yes, there's still a place on your team. But Jesus, I did. Yep. And I know that too. And I know the secret stuff that you're not even saying right now, but I still want you on the team. Why? Because somewhere down the, ro- the line, somebody else that's in the same mess that you're in now needs to see the power of who I am in your life and how I picked you up out of that madness and put you down over here. And now they can have hope. They can see, they can be encouraged that somebody can make it. And there was a way. That's why he calls himself the way. There is only one way. There's one way, right? He is that way. They need to be witness to that way, family. That's what we do. That's what we get encouraged about. That's what I get excited about is that there's a way. And Jesus is that way. So we get here, we, 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 uh, we get excited about our diversity. See, the problem... A part of the problem is we've allowed the megaphone to be in the hands of folks who would rather divide. And and they're and they're getting louder and louder. And they're saying, Oh, well, you either you gotta choose a side. You either gotta be red or blue, uh, uh, or you gotta like this or or and hate that. That's not the way God's kingdom works. They're trying to make you say, if you stand on this platform, then you automatically are against any other thing like that. I'm telling you, in God's kingdom, as I said, we operate from the place of love first and foremost. We have to start seeing each other in that aspect. Then people will start looking at the blended church and saying, you know what, they do something. They already do. They already do. They're already saying, you guys are doing something over there, and and you don't believe me? Just one day ask our pastor. He's called all over the, the world to say, hey, how are you guys managing? You got black, white, Hispanic, this, that, the other, everybody coming together. How in the world are you worshiping together? Isn't that a funny question? Because isn't that the normal way it should be? Is is, Is it? But the reality is we still exist in a society who wants to divide. And we know it's a trick of the enemy. We know what he's trying to do. If he can separate us, that's where he'll destroy you. And they'll start picking us off one by one. So at, at the Blended Church, we want to come against that feeling, against uh, uh, anything that doesn't represent who Jesus is. That's what our team is about. We lock arms and, and come together in that vein. 1 Corinthians uh, 12 uh, reminds us of that and what the team looks like. Uh, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit, Jesus. Again, we have diversity of people, but Jesus is still our head. He's, he's our head player. He's our head coach, right? He's the one uh, leading and guiding us. Next verse says this, there are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Just a reminder, right? You could be different. You could be doing something different. You look a little different. Not every spot is yours, but we're reminded Jesus is in control. Let's keep moving, and the next point I want to talk about our team is overcoming challenges. Overcoming challenges. 
That's what we do on our team. Uh, life often presents us with trials and obstacles that can seem insurmountable if faced alone. Church, if we could just get past the place where we feel like you got to take, take on everything yourself, right? I know some of you are prayer warriors, and you shouting down demons, and you casting out this, and, and, you, and you praying, and, and then you start to get exhausted and weary, and part of the problem is you haven't recognized that you're part of a team here. Jesus never asked you to do it all by yourself. He never created us to be alone by ourselves trying to get this thing done, this Christian walk. We, he knows this hard. He says you're going to have trials. You're going to have tough times that you're going to face. And the way we face them best is together. We were created for community. That's another thing we say around here. We create culture here. Part of our culture is creating community. That's why we have our groups. That's why we do different things uh, uh, together that way because we understand that uh, nobody should be alone. It, at least we, do, we, we want to prov provide the environment in which you know that you're not alone. God's word, again, tells us that as well in Ecclesiastes 4. It says this, two are better than one because they have good reward uh, for their labor. Two is better than one. He understands that there's going to be times that you're going to feel like you're alone. But know that there's somebody that's with you that's ready to stand with you. If they understand the goal, if they understand what we should be doing as a team. Next verse says this. For if, for if they fall, one will lift up his companion, but woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. And see, I, I feel like this is the, the slippery slope that some of us find ourselves in. We've been out here on our own trying to get it done, and then you fall down, and then you, you, instead of recognizing the team aspect and asking for help, what we do is we start pulling other people down with us. Pastor, I'm in depression. Yeah. And then, and so, oh, oh woe is me. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm laying here. Uh, uh, can somebody understand where I am? Uh, I, I have all these bills and financial situations. Nobody knows what my troubles are. And nobody knows, the, 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 it starts sounding like the song. Oh, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. And, and so you start grabbing on people and you want them to get to your level instead of understanding the power of who God is in your life and understanding that he said, I never told you to lay down there. I never told you to get stuck in that mess? And don't you realize that I've sent these other people as your teammates to help lift you up, to help guide you, to help give you wisdom, to help be wise counsel? I, I've sent them right to you, but because you want to do it all your own, and you want it, and then you get deeper and deeper and deeper. When Jesus never asked for that, he never asked for you to be in that position by yourself. And I'm, I'm, again, I know there's some real heavy stuff out there that, that we deal with, family. I know addiction is hard. I watched it go through my father and, and my father's father, and, and, and alcoholism ruined a, a part of my family line. And I know my father didn't want to be an alcoholic. Just like I know some of you don't want to be bound up in addiction. You don't want to have that angry streak. You don't want to have what, whatever that vice is in your, in, in your world. But I'm here to tell you that doesn't have to be your label. Just as I started to understand who God is in my life and the good father that he is, I was able to turn, pivot away from the things that were being dictated in my life by the world and say, God, I know you have greater things for me. It was things like that. And then because my grandmother was already part of the team, you already know this story, I won't belabor it, but she was praying over me as a little boy. The reason why I'm standing here sharing God's word with you is because she took the time to get into God's word and to break down and to humble herself. She wasn't looking for accolades. She wasn't looking for things to, to glorify herself. My grandmother would have been the greatest friend to everybody, and you'd never know what her real name was because she would serve outside of herself, and she would always point to Jesus. But it took a while for me to go through the trials and the tribulations in my life to understand how good God is. Like, wait a minute. There wasn't my, just my grandmother. There was somebody else that she kept telling me about. There was the prayers that she bathed me in that led me to understand the goodness of who he was. To understand to a point that I had to be part of the team. I stand here today not out of my own wants or desires. It was, it's because God has me here to tell you there's a place on the team. There's a place on the team. And see, knowing my place and under, coming to understand my place in God and who Jesus is in my life helped break those other things away from me. That's the strength of the team. That's why this concept is so important. 
because there is work to do as a church, and to do that, we got to go out and do what God has called us to do. We got to strengthen the team. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm just here trying to encourage you, understanding what we should be doing, and that leads me to this clip. I, I want to share this clip from, uh, from uh, the series Chosen. I love this clip because it says so much. I'm going to get into it and um, just let it speak for itself, and I'll come back on the other end. So guys, go ahead and run that clip. It would appear as if we were building an army, teacher. <laughs> Well, that's one way of looking at it. The other way to look at it is my way. <clears throat> the correct way, you mean? Yes, Simon. Mm. Those people are like those in regions all over. They are not an army. Not yet. They are in need of rescue. And you are going to help me rescue them. Different kind of rescue, see? It is not sustainable for me to do all the preaching, all the healing, and ministering. I've called you to Simon's home today, and thank you, Eden, for hosting, because our ministry will only grow, and we want it to grow, till the end of the age. There will be many more followers, and like those not here, all will have roles and responsibilities. Most will be disciples, students, But I have chosen you twelve as my apostles. You're sending us? An apostle is the same as a messenger, one who... I know what it means, Matthew. That's why I'm asking. You are my leaders. And for this mission I have for you, it's best that you spread out and not be concentrated in one place. I... I don't understand. I'm going to go home to Nazareth for a time, and while I'm there, I'm sending you out in every direction, two by two, specifically to our people only. Every direction, Rabbi? Yes, but not to the Gentiles. Not yet. That will come in time but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, just as Joshua led the 12 tribes to take the promised land. You will proclaim as you go, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And while you are on this mission, you will heal the sick and the lame by anointing them with oil. You will cast out demons. You will clean... Why are you all looking at me like that? Uh, could, could you just repeat that one more time? <laughs> I'm sending you out two by two, proclaiming as you go, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cast out demons. Uh, how soon are we talking about here? There's that word again. I'll get to that, Simon. Hold on. Heal the sick? Cast out demons? While you are on this mission, I grant you this authority. Someday, you will have it all the time. Was that a ceremony I missed? This is it. Don't feel any different? I don't need you to feel anything to do great things. But, uh, with all due respect, Rabbi, we've only just begun as students. We're not nearly qualified enough. Why would you need us for this work? He doesn't need us. He wants us. Thank you, see. Very good. John, if I needed religious leaders or qualified students for my ministry, I wouldn't have chosen... <laughs> well... You'll get the point. Can we get back to the part about healing the sick for one second? You will take nothing for your journey except the staff. No bread, no bag, no money. Not even Salome's food. Wear sandals and do not bring an extra tunic. 
We can't even bring a change of clothes? Even the wandering cynic philosophers carry a second tunic. Yes, they do. And I'd like to distinguish you from the cynics. They also carry beggars' bags for people to put gold and silver coins into. And you will not do that. You received without paying. Now give without pay. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it and stay there until you depart. And if anyone should not receive you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet as you leave that house or town. Do not waste your time. You said if anyone will not listen to our words. What words exactly? What are we supposed to teach? Anything you've ever heard from me. I've only ever heard the one sermon. You heard the best one anyway. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're <laughs> oh, so good. Uh -huh. That message was not just for the thousands that were there. It was for all who will hear it from now until the end of the age. How will they know it, you ask? Good question. Thanks for asking. You will tell them. And the places you will go are places I will soon go. So you are preparing the way for my arrival and helping ensure that more people are ready to hear the good news. The miracles you'll perform on God's authority will prove my ministry. Suppose we hit a bad streak and several towns in a row reject us, maybe for days. How are we to eat? What if it gets bad? Like, like it has with John. Listen carefully, all of you. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. So, you're saying we could die? There will come a time when this will become far more difficult. When persecution is an ever-present part of your ministry. When that time comes, you will follow in my footsteps and you will know what it actually means to give up your life. So the question is, what are we doing as a team? That's what we're doing as a team. It's to take the gospel out. Can you imagine sitting around the table? I, I know these are actors and they're, it's their interpretation of the portrayal of that moment. But see, the, the truth is this really happened. The real disciples that went from that place and changed the world. And that lineage continues on in you and I. That's the greatest uh, uh, locker room pep talk they are ever given by the greatest coach there could ever be. And as family members, what we have to recognize is that Jesus still is walking with us. He's still giving us that same assignment. And yes, family, it's going to get difficult. Being on the team, you got to ask yourself, where am I going to stand? See, I think we've all been there, and you've been on, most of you probably have been on teams. Hopefully you have where you, you got that one player that just supersedes everything. It's like, oh, we got so-and-so? Eh, we got this. Yeah. Here's the question. Why aren't we acting like that as a church? Why aren't we walking in that same anointing? Why aren't we walking with our, our head held high and our chest out saying, Jesus is on our team? Why aren't we embracing those moments of understanding that we are operating from a place of victory? And as a team member, I have to play my role. I have to do my part. See, I know some of you right now are thinking, yeah, but you don't know my story. There's, there's a, a picture, uh, uh, there's a, a character um, 
in here, little, little James is what they call it, one of the disciples. Little James, and we put his picture up there. See, those of you that may not know the story, little James has uh, uh, some issues. He has an infirmity. He has a limp, so he walks with a staff everywhere he goes. And so he heard that Jesus said, you're going to have the power to heal the lame. And I could see it in a, in a shot right there, right there. He's thinking, what about me, Lord? What about me? You mean to tell me I'm going to go walk around, share your good news, other people are going to get healed, and I still got to walk with this limp? And I still got to have this infirmity? See, that's what I feel like what's holding us back as a church. That's holding us back as a team. We're too focused on, on what isn't instead of realizing who is in our life. You're looking at your infirmity. See, the rest of the story goes on. He did go out. Jesus still used him. And he did go out and heal. And he did go out and share the good news and gospel. And people got saved and healed. At some place, he resolved himself and said, you know what, Lord? I'm going to stop looking at me. And I'm going to stay fixated on you. I'm going to stop looking at me individually. And I'm going to start looking at the team effort. And what I should, the role that I should be playing. That's my, that's my cry to all of us today. Is that we not get fixated on what we don't have. But remember who's on our team. And what we need to be doing. Family, you do have a mission. You do have an assignment. And we are on the team. It's up to you whether or not you're going to play your role. As I said first service, maybe you're here today and, and you don't know Jesus. I'm here to tell you there's a jersey with your name on it. And it's waiting for you. You can be part of the team. You just have to step up and claim it. Amen? Stand on your feet with me. So as the altar team comes, if you are here and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me just say this right now, right where you are, there's a place on the team. He knows what you've done. He knows what's going on in your life. He knows it better than you. And the enemy would continue to lie to you and say you're not worthy. I'm trying to tell you right now, Jesus came and was on the cross. And he died for you and I. In three days he rose again and he's alive and he's ready to meet you right where you are. You can cry out to him. Receive the free gift of salvation. Oh, it's going to mean something. Being on the team isn't going to be easy. I don't, don't let me, don't let me set, set, that, set you up for that. But it will be worth it. You just got to make that initial step. So if that's you, right where you are or here at the altar, we're ready to confirm with you and celebrate making the greatest decision you'll ever make in your life. Or maybe you need to reassess uh, your, your position on the team, start sharpening your skills and start playing the role that you need to do. Maybe you as a family, maybe you individually need to come down and get refocused as to what God wants to do. Today's that day. Don't be, leave out the same way you came in, recognizing that Jesus is here and he's ready to meet you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you and we honor you. Father, thank you for reminding us that there is something for us to be doing. It's not just about going through the days that you've given us, Father. We, are need, we need to make the most of these days. Lord, help us to do that. You said your mercies are new every morning. Father, let us embrace all that you have for us, Lord. And be bold enough to open our mouth when you've called us to do and share the good news with someone else. Father, in these coming weeks, uh, there's going to be opportunities we have to bring people into relationship with you. May, we, may you send the Holy Spirit and embolden us to do that, Father. We love you with everything that we have, and we honor you, Lord. And we ask all of this in Jesus' mighty name, and we all say amen. God bless you. Thank you for your attention. Please tell the children's church workers thank you as you pick up your children. Uh, let's get ready for July and invite, 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 and we'll have a great time. Davey is back with us next week. God bless you guys.